So this is OGX shampoo and conditioner for a grand total price of $14.68 US plus tax. This is, as you can't see what it says, Oribe shampoo and conditioner, which is a luxury hair care line. And the total price for both of that shampoo and conditioner was $100.82. Now this video is not sponsored. I bought both of them with my own money and I am testing in today's video, cheap versus expensive hair care products to find out which result is superior. So for this test, I took into account my hair type for each of the lines that I bought. So for my fine textured hair, I need volumizing products that don't weigh my hair down. So in an attempt to be as apples to apples as possible, I purchased the volumizing line from both of these brands. So the OGX is the thick and full extra volume biotin and collagen shampoo and the Oribe shampoo and conditioner magnificent volume. I'm not gonna wash my hair one and then the other back to back. That would just be stupid. I'm gonna follow my normal hair care routines. So I'll wash my hair today because my hair is really gross right now. And that's on purpose, by the way, for this video. Don't make fun of me for having ugly hair. Now, obviously the test won't be an exact replica of one of the other because the weather might have changed from week to week, or you know, I may have sweat more depending on how much I exercise, but I can't really control a lot of these variables. I am controlling for as much as I can, which is I'll wait five days between each wash. I will not use any other styling products and I won't be doing any like heat treatments. I'm just going to wash, condition, let it air dry, see how it turns out. Then I'll wait five days, wash, condition, let it air dry and see how it turns out. And then I'll be comparing both of these results. Now, before we start on that test, I want to compare a couple other things. First, let's look at the packaging. Now I bought OGX from the grocery store, so there aren't any boxes that they shipped it to me in, but these are the Oribe boxes. I can tell you they definitely don't feel like expensive boxes. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm paying $100 for shampoo and conditioner, I want it to come in like a gold plated, velvety something, leather box or something, right? These boxes do feel pretty cheap, so they definitely didn't pass those cost savings on to the customer. Another thing to note, the OGX bottles are both 385 milliliters or 13 ounces, where the Oribe boxes, the shampoo is 250 mils, eight and a half fluid ounces, and the conditioner is 200 mils, which is 6.8 ounces. So not only are you spending spending more money, you're getting less product, but let's keep going. So looking at OGX bottles, they're typical plastic bottles. They both have a one recycled number on the bottom, which is good. It's PET plastic or otherwise known as polyethylene treptholate, which is a 100% recyclable form of plastic. So I guess if you're going to use plastic bottles, PET is the one you want to use. The Oribe bottles are also both plastic. The shampoo, is a one, which is the same as the OGX, the PET plastic. Their conditioner on the other hand is a four, which is LDPE or low density polyethylene, which can sometimes be recycled. So not the most environmentally friendly. Again, if I'm paying $100 for shampoo and conditioner, I want it in like aluminum bottles or something that is fully like recyclable. I don't know, glass maybe. But again, they're pocketing the savings, not passing those savings on to the customer with their plastic bottles. So if their goal is to be a premium brand, at least their packaging has not convinced me yet, but hopefully their product is amazing. So before doing a product use test on my hair, now I want to look at how the actual products feel to the touch. The OGX shampoo in my hands and on my fingers feels very sticky. So it's almost like honey or something. It's quite thick and viscous. The Oribe on the other hand is thick as well, but it doesn't quite feel as sticky. So if there's any chemists watching this, maybe you can tell me what that means. I don't know how I feel about using such a sticky shampoo on my hair, but we'll see. Just from the look and feel perspective on the shampoo, the Oribe feels much nicer to the touch to me. But again, any chemist can let me know if I'm correct in that assumption. Comparing the conditioners now, the OGX conditioner definitely feels much more watery. As you can see here, it's pretty much just sliding down my hand, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because for volumizing products, you want it to be light, you don't want it to be too heavy. But my only concern is that this formula is like overly diluted with water and it's like 85% water, right? And like a really low percent of active ingredients and then the rest is like preservatives. And that's why maybe it's seven bucks. The Oribe conditioner on the other hand feels much less watery, but also not too heavy or too sticky. It feels nicer, it feels pricier, right? It's lightweight, it's not watery which tells me that there's much more active ingredients in the formula 
and that's probably where they spent the most amount of money is on the actual ingredients going into the product. Also, by the way, it smells amazing. So the Oribe, I haven't talked about fragrance yet, but the Oribe fragrance is much stronger than the OGX. So I think there's a higher percentage of fragrance, but it just smells so nice. It smells luxurious. Whereas the OGX just kind of smells, eh. It smells kind of cheap and kind of non-existent. It's really weak. But in terms of the touch and the feel of both products, I would say the Oribe feels much higher quality in my hands. And if I had to guess where costs went, then it would be on the formula and the ingredients, which at the end of the day is more important than packaging anyways. Uh, but let's actually use them both and we'll see how my hair responds. So I'm gonna wash my hair with the OGX first and then I will see you guys in the future. Just washed my hair with the OGX and I'm waiting for it to dry. I'll come back obviously and show a you know, fully dry a review as well. But I wanted to quickly note, uh, just like the washing experience while my hair is drying, as I was washing my hair, the fragrance of OGX became a little more pronounced and I didn't like it. it smelled to me like cough syrup, but we'll see uh, how it looks when it dries. My hair was actually a lot greasier than I thought, so I ended up shampooing my hair twice. I'm gonna do the same thing with the Oribe, is I'll wash twice just to get an exact comparison. So I used about a quarter size amount of shampoo the first one and about a nickel in the second one. And then I used about a quarter size amount of conditioner from mid roots all the way to my ends. And then I took a wide tooth comb and sort of detangled because my hair's kind of wavy. I usually detangle it in the shower now. A couple things that I looked at was the wet conditioning feel. Basically what that is, is is when you rinse the conditioner out of your hair, how smooth can your fingers like basically slide through your hair? It was actually very nice with OGX. It felt very conditioned, but typically a lot of these drugstore shampoos, they load up on the conditioning agents to almost give you a sensory condition overload feeling. I will see you guys back here in a second when my hair is totally dry. Okay, what's up guys? So this is actually the next day after washing my hair because I washed my hair, it was really wet, and then I had to go pick up my daughter from school and then it was just a hectic night and I just couldn't sit down to film again. I'm coming at you the next day. So this is kind of day two, how it looks. You know what, it has quite a bit of volume. I do think that it does what it says it was supposed to do is give volume. My hair feels squeaky clean. I know the detergent in the OGX was sodium C14 to 16 olefin sulfonate, which is an anionic, very strong detergent just underneath a sulfate. So sulfates are here, sulfonates are probably like right here. I imagine my hair is going to feel at least clean and keep my sebum buildup at bay for a while. Again, there still is some frizz. If you look kind of close here, see a lot of like flyaways and frizz. See, I don't love that about it. Yeah, overall it's not bad. For 15 bucks, like my hair feels pretty good. If you need just something cheap and quick, 15 bucks, like this is a great option. I don't really like the fragrance. Yeah, I would probably rate this if I had to give it a rating out of 10, like a six out of the 10, and I would have given it a seven or a seven and a half if the fragrance was nicer. Day five, after using OGX, I had my hair up because I was out to brunch with my family. It's the weekend. I just want to give a quick update. It's starting to feel a little greasy. Now that's my normal sebum production cycle is roughly every five to six days I need to wash again. It's honestly not as greasy as like other shampoos and conditioners I've used, but I also didn't really exercise a whole lot between the wash and today. I'm just going to push one more day until it feels like really ready. So we're at day seven. I know we skipped day six. My hair is disgusting. It smells bad. I need to wash it. Normally I would have washed it yesterday like in any other normal week, but since I'm doing this series, which requires me to not only wash it, but then like film, that's like a two to three hour like process. Uh, yesterday was just a super busy day. Feels overly disgusting, but it doesn't like look overly disgusting. Honestly, the OGX did a very good job. Normally I can't go even five days. I have the Oribe right here. I'm gonna go shower with it. The detergent was not a strong one. I think it was sodium methyl isethionate. Still an anionic surfactant, but it's way gentler than C14 to 16 olefin sulfonate. I'm gonna go wash my hair right now and I'll see you guys right after that and let you know what the experience was like. So I just got done washing my hair with the Oribe. I just washed my hair, it's a very pleasant experience. I enjoyed the fragrance quite a bit. My hair smells quite nice, a lot better than it did before. And I was also just reading up on like what went into their formula because I was kind of curious what makes it so expensive. A high-tech polymer blend 
it plumps the look of each strand, adding fullness and body. To me, that is just like saying, oh, we have a proprietary blend, when any chemist could probably reverse engineer exactly what it is and just add those ingredients to a formula. My hair, after washing the conditioner out, was very smooth, it was silky, my fingers just slid through my hair like butter. Well, let's wait till it dries and I'll come back and we'll see how voluminous it looks, how plump each strand is from their high-tech polymer blend. So my hair is dry and holy volume. It's, it's a little bit frizzy, mainly because I was outside and I had to go pick up my daughter. That's probably where the frizz came from. Again, I'm not using any other complimentary products on top. This is just shampoo and conditioner, shampoo and conditioner comparison. I think it looks pretty good. But how does this compare to the OGX? Well, one, I was reading a lot of the reviews about this product and a lot of people were just saying like, you're paying for a bougie smelling fragrance, which I agree with. It smells really, really good and really luxurious. And you're also paying for like a custom cool looking bottle. And that might be true. Their bottle's custom. I know those are a little more expensive to produce, but at the same time it is plastic. So I don't know how expensive a custom plastic bottle is. And then there are some other comments basically saying like they get the same results from other products. And then there are other reviews saying that this is like the best shampoo and conditioner on the planet for people with like thin hair or fine hair to give it some voluminous look. So I'm not gonna lie, my hair feels really full right now. Would I dish out a hundred bucks to use this? No, I don't think I would. Price is relative, right? A hundred bucks might be cheap to someone. You can spend a hundred dollars on shampoo and conditioner and it doesn't affect your budget in any way. It doesn't affect your wallet, your bank account. You can do it over and over again. Go for it, right? This is, it's good stuff. Like I enjoyed the experience, but I get kind of similar results with $15 shampoo and conditioner. If I'm being honest, like the results are pretty similar. The only difference I've really had was the smell and the fragrance, and that's about it. I wouldn't spend $100 on this stuff. And honestly, I probably wouldn't spend 15 bucks on the OGX either, just cause I don't like how it smells. I would spend something in the middle of the road, something that is just as good of quality as an Oribe that smells really nice and something that's not gonna break the bank either. I think that just gave me another video idea to make on best like affordable quality products. 